You're listening to the Holistic Spaces podcast brought to you by Mindful Design Feng Shui School. Episode 116, Ask Angie and Laura. Welcome to episode 116 of the Holistic Spaces podcast, where we hope to inspire, educate, and empower you to create your own holistic spaces that nurture and resonate with you. Angie Cho and Laura Morris are the founders of the Mindful Design Feng Shui School. Together, they have over three decades of experience designing harmonious living spaces. Angie and Laura have guided thousands of people to shift their energy and revitalize their lives. Mindful Design School offers feng shui courses and certifications. Be sure to check us out at mindfuldesignschool.com and holisticspaces.com. So we have a fun episode today. We're doing this. We're actually recording this live or we're streaming it live on Instagram. So if you want to see what it looks like on Instagram, you can visit our Instagram um, account, Mindful Design School. And we also have one of our listeners with us on Zoom. So she's going to ask one of our questions, but this, uh, or ask her question, but we have this, um, fun episode, which we'll try to do more often called Ask Angie and Laura. So what we did was for those of you that are on our newsletter list, um, you had the opportunity to receive a link to submit a question. So we got quite a few questions, but we picked the one, the, the top few that were the most relevant and the most helpful for everybody. And some, and the ones that made the most sense, because there were some questions that don't really didn't make sense. So we kept it, we tried to keep, to, to keep it broad, but also to keep it helpful for the listeners. And so we selected a few and we'll go over them today. And then Jennifer is one of the people who did ask the question, ask a question, and she's here with us live on the Zoom. So she'll be able to ask that out loud. But before we get into that, Laura, um, what do uh, we have to, we wanted to let people know about our upcoming info sessions, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, so the first one is, well, April. We'll have different, we're going to have different info sessions yeah. in April for our certification that starts May 1st. And so if you are interested in learning more about the Mindful Design Feng Shui School certification program, you can go to Mindful Design School train. Oh, no, mindfuldesigntraining.com or just like find us on Instagram. Go to our website. There's a button yeah. that says they'll take you right there. Yeah. So we're running them through April. And if you are interested in the, um, the program, it is really the best opportunity for you to come and learn all of the details because we'll walk you through every module, like all the modules. We'll walk you through what the requirements are, dates, um, and all that stuff. So if you're interested, this our ne our next class session starts uh, the first weekend of May. So we'll be working on those. Uh, join us, come, ask questions. We do them all. We always do them live and online. So there, we're we're always there doing that. This. this isn't a recording. It's us actually there walking you through the program. Yeah, and one more thing too, you can. There's certainly a lot of people that join the certification program that aren't necessarily looking to become feng shui consultants, but really actually have always loved feng shui and are like ready to go dive deep and not just like do it as do it kind of halfway, but or even not even halfway, like one percent, like. But to really study with Laura and myself, and we uh, keep the class very small. It's a small cohort. So we want to make sure that we know everybody and it's, um, it's very personalized. Like Laura and I do every single student's feng shui consultation on their own home. And you have access to us for the full certification. And then also we of course have, um, we, we know you and then you are, our students or our grads or our colleagues for, for, you know, for life. So yeah, check it out and you can learn more at mindfuldesignschool.com. So, um, so okay. yeah, let's start with ask Angie and Laura. Okay. So we're doing this for the first time, Jennifer, thanks for kind of being our guinea pig. So I'm going to unmute you, Jennifer, can you, oh wait. Oh yeah. Ask okay. Uh, I think it worked. Can you hear me? Yes. We can okay. hear you. <laughs> oh, good. I couldn't get in online, so I'm I'm looking at you through my phone. Hey, but 
How are you? We're good. We're good. Good. My question is, do you have any suggestions for creating a supportive environment for an adult returning to school part-time? Okay. So we're going to mute you, but. Okay. Okay. Cause to keep the audio nice. Uh, so Laura, do you want to go first? Yeah. So, um, okay. So the question, um, supportive environment returning to school part-time. Yeah, so I would say the first thing I would look at would be your desk or your working, your workspace. Where are you going to start this new part of your life? Because it's a big deal, right? You're going back to school as an adult. You're also, you're gonna be more focused because again, I, you know, when you're adults, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this right. So you want everything done, you know, you want everything lined up and, and ready to go. So I would say where carve out a space somewhere in your home that is your dedicated um, workspace that you can study in, focus in, and wherever you find that, it doesn't have to be its own little room. I mean, that's a luxury if you can have that, but if you don't, it could just be an area that you've carved out for yourself that sort of stays as that spot. It would be really good if you've kind of marked that as your territory. So that you know when you go there that that is when you're going into that study mode or focus you also want to make sure that in that area that you have a really good um, chair a, a solid chair preferably one with a high back supportive to give you that mountain feeling that support behind you right that cradling nurturing feeling um and then the workspace itself, where it's positioned, sometimes you might be limited, right? And so I don't know if you've heard us talk about this before, Jennifer, but we talk a lot about the command or commanding position. So, you know, where are you in relation to the energy that's coming at you? So, you know, if you're sitting, let's say you're sitting at your dining room table, when you look up, you know, maybe your back is to the front door or you know or you're in your bedroom and you've set up a little work area and again your back is to your bedroom door so we you really want to be able to have it if you can position your desk or your work area so that you can see what's coming at you which is generally the main door it could be the front door it could be the door to whatever room it could be you know sort of the open space that that you're if you turn you know it's the main open space and your back is preferably if you can to a wall so it's supportive um then you know that's the ideal position now if you can't do that what you what we recommend you do is you could just use a mirror like a really simple small mirror you can um if you have a desktop computer you can put a little rear view round rear view mirror you can find them online um, little one, it's like two, three inches wide, small. It's it's um, um, convex generally, so it, it can capture more of the space behind you. And so you position that somewhere, um, maybe on the wall, maybe on your desktop, um, on your monitor, whatever works for you um, to be able to capture uh, what's happening behind you so that you actually have a vision of the opening, the, the, the chi that's coming in so that you can... You want to be in control of your space. And if you're learning um, and starting over again, you really do want to make sure that you can harness those opportunities, be in control, feel confident. So all those things go with it. Great. And um, I just have a couple things to add. By the way, Jennifer, I know you follow us. So it's nice to, um, to it's, it's very nice that you participated and asked the question and um, that we could uh, do work with you today. So um, a couple other things to consider when you're starting something new, because your question was, um, do you have any suggestions for creating a supportive environment for an adult returning to school part-time? And so when you're starting something new, there's also two areas of the Bagua map that you might or one area of the Bagua map that's related to starting new things. And then there's another area that's related to your skills, because I'm assuming if you're starting, if you're returning to school part-time, it's that you wanna um, cultivate your knowledge and your skills and yourself. So the first is called, 
The first is called Jin Position, which is a new beginnings, and that's the family area. That's the green area, the Feng Shui Bagua map. And it relates to new beginnings and starting new things. So that's a great one you can activate. And you can also like look at, you know, look at um, some of our old blog posts to figure out how to lay out the blog Bagua map for um, for those listeners. And then good position is the skills and knowledge area, which is the dark blue area. So that's another one you can activate as well. So you can activate these areas really simply by looking and seeing what's in the area, you can bring in like a living green plant, or maybe that's a great place to place your new desk. So, so thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Um, so let me go through these other questions. So we had a question from Rita and Rita asked, uh, <coughs> excuse me, your podcast is a wealth of information. Would love to learn about crystals, essential oils, and the different guas, please. Thank you. So, um, so in general, so Laura's going to go through some crystals, but I want to just start with in general, um, when a couple things to note when we talk about crystals and feng shui is that we often talk about feng shui crystal balls, but they're actually different than, than those natural crystals like amethyst or, um, or quartz. So feng shui crystal balls are glass crystal and they're faceted. I wonder if I have one. Hold on. Laura, do you have one ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yep, I have one right here. It's a small one, but. Whee! There it is. Okay, cool. So we have um, the feng shui crystal ball and that's different than a natural occurring feng shui crystal, uh, sorry, a natural occurring crystal. But I think Rita is talking about natural crystals. So um, another thing we wanna do is Laura is gonna go through all the feng shui um, bagua areas and a crystal that will connect. And you can also just go on a crystal that is the color of the gua and keep it really simple to really enhance that gua. And then another rule of thumb is do not try to activate all the areas of your Bagua map. You only want to select like one or two things, one or two or ma maximum like three areas that you want to activate. Um, because otherwise you're just, um, you're trying to perfect everything and that's not what Feng Shui is about. So Laura is going to go through yep. each Gua. Okay. Yeah. So you had asked about activating areas, again, the Bagua with natural crystals. So what I thought we would do is we would go through, we'll give you one crystal for each area of the Bagua. So a couple of things you need to do before um, you do this is you, for those of you listening out there um, and watching, um, you need to understand the Bagua. You need to know what the Bagua is. You need to know how to, you know, what, what it is, where it is, et cetera. So if you are confused and you don't know what this is, if you go um, to our um, our website, mindfuldesignschool.com, if you go to blog, you can get a free download that will show talk to you about the Bagua. Okay, so walk you through that. Um, so the Bagua is a grid that, for lack of a better word, it's a grid. It's a way to um, look at your space and see all of the sort of elements and journey and parts of your life, right? So it's an energetic way to map out a space. And we often, most commonly we use it on the house, but it can be used on many different things. So I'm really simplifying it here, just FYI, everybody. But it's a way to sort of map out your space so that you can sort of see what different areas of your life, what's going on, what you can do to activate them, you know, what's happening. Cause it's like a, it's like a mirror of your own life in a way when you know how to map it correctly. So let's assume that you've mapped it and you know what we're talking about here. So I will start with, uh, we'll go through the nine areas. Okay. So the first area is family. It's called family or new beginnings. Um, and that would be the, um, the one we would suggest would be green quartz. Okay. Speaks to the color, et cetera. The next one is wealth. So wealth is the gua connected with wealth, prosperity, abundance. Um, and we would say amethyst. Okay. It's purple. It's, you know, it's got the right qualities. Um, the next area is helpful people. 
So this is again, connected to helpful people, benefactors, opportunities, synchronicity, all those great things, travel. Um, the crystals to activate or crystal to activate that we would say would be smoky quartz. Um, the next is productivity and children. This area is again, it's about completing things. It's about your creative output. It's about things that you've made and sort of um, you, you have come to fruition, right? And children. And the um, crystal that we would suggest would be quartz, clear quartz. Uh, the next area is knowledge. The knowledge area is really about your own self-knowledge, the skills you need, your, you know, meditating, your general, your self-awareness in general, like what you do and how you feel about it, and all the skills you come along in your path. Um, crystals to activate, blue sodalite, we would recommend if there was one. And then we have um, fame, reputation. This is all about how you're perceived, your visibility out in the world, what people think of you, basically, how people see you. Um, and the crystal we would say for this to activate would be carnelian. Uh, career, the career gua, the career area, really it's about your path in life, um, you know, your career, but really on a deep level, like the wisdom you have, like what you've kind of come upon your journey, like that deep knowing that you have and that wisdom that you've attained and your purpose, et cetera. Uh, crystal that we would say to activate, we would say black obsidian. Okay. And then love and partnership, love and partnership. It's just, it's about, yes, it's about relationships. Yes. It's about love, romance, all those things, but it's also about self-care, nurturing, female energy. Um, and we would, uh, say rose quartz for that. And then last but not least, we'll come to the center, which is not a gua because it's not a direction or not an area, you know, it is the center, but it's very important and it represents unity, well-being, everything coming together, right? It's the center, the Tai Chi. So we would, um, the color associated with this, it's for very earth, it, like it's an earth gua or sorry, earth area, and also um, health and well-being. So we connect this one we came up with was tiger eye, tiger's eye. So that is all nine areas of the Bagua, one natural crystal each. Thank you, Laura. And it's just a little plug for the Holistic Spaces store. Um, I do have a online store called holisticspaces.com. And we sell all of those crystals in a kit. But don't try to use all the crystals, like we said. Okay. And, the, and then the last part of Rita's question I'll touch upon is essential oils. So in general, one of our favorite um, essential oils to work with in feng shui is orange, sweet orange essential oil, because um, oranges are really revered in feng shui because they are super young energy. They're very bright. Uh, it's very bright and life affirming and it's like the energy of the sun and when you even when you look at an orange it looks like um a little sun right and so essential the essential oil uh, the sweet orange essential oil has like this essential essence of the oil of the orange that can be used to you can diffuse it in your home you can mist it in your home i also sell this on the holistic spaces store it's called happy and that's kind of what orange does. It's very happy, it's uplifting, it brightens your space, and it's also a way of space clearing. So that's one essential oil that we love for feng shui. So thanks Rita for your question. And then we'll, we'll move on to the third question from Adriana. And Adriana asked, uh, I don't have a very green thumb. And the only plant that I can keep alive is a snake plant. However, I heard that plants with pointed spiky leaves are not the ideal plants to keep in the house. Do I need to get rid of the snake plant? Laura? Let me answer that. Um, no, God, no. Don't get rid of your snake plant. Uh, I love snake plants. I... Um, they have many names, mother-in-law tongue, but you know, let's call them snake plants. Uh, they're beautiful plants. They're super easy to grow. Like you said, you know, if you have, if you're, if you're not the greenest of thumbs, they're so forgiving. 
Um, they're so stately when you have a really big, I mean, I have a huge one that is just, I mean, it makes the space, right? It's just beautiful. So no, don't get rid of your snake plant. So this is this thing with feng shui implants. So, you know, there always seems to be a lot of rules, right? Like, don't do this, don't do that. Um, but it's always, it depends. So there are places you can put the snake plant and there's areas you can use it for. And especially if it's brought you so much joy and you've cared for it and it, and you've managed to make it thrive. I mean, that alone for me, um, as a feng shui practitioner, that trumps and bypasses everything about don't do and do that. Because the fact that you struggled with plants and growing them and you've taken the time and you've, you've named your plant and you love your plant so much that I, I think that that in itself is a feng shui adjustment. And because one thing about plants is they represent the wood, uh, the wood element and wood chi, and it is about um, compassion. It's about flexibility. Um, and really when you spend the time to care for a plant like that, I mean, you really brought something, some really special energy into your home. So I would say absolutely do not get rid of it. Angie, do you agree? Yep, I agree. And we also have a whole podcast episode that kind of talks about this. It's podcast 111 or 111, and it's called Bad Feng Shui Plants. And it's, um, and we talk a lot about this, but I totally agree with everything that Laura says. So last but not least, we have one more question. And remember, the Ask Angie and Laura questions are only um, open to our newsletter subscribers. So you have to sign into our newsletter and uh, occasionally we'll send out an email saying, hey, we're doing another Ask Angie and Laura and you can submit your questions. So um, otherwise you can also hire one of our students if you have personalized feng shui questions. Um, but yeah, be thoughtful and and respect people's knowledge and 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 um, hire people for their information, right? Um, unless they ask you like to ask, you know, unless we're asking you for questions, which we did here. So our last question is um, from Deeksha and she asked, or they asked, uh, what are some changes that I can make in my space to boost my confidence and self-esteem? You want me to start? Uh, you sure, start. you start. You start. Well, we talked a bit about, um, if you listen to what I said at the beginning to the, for the first question, setting up your space, uh, going back to school with the commanding position, that would be one of the things I would start with. So if you, um, if you are feeling like you don't, you, you're, you're lacking confidence, you don't feel like you're in control, could be at work, could be at home. You have to look at three, three areas, but I'll give you two to focus on, right? So this one, one would be your bed and two would be the desk. So we talked about the desk position in the first question. So if you didn't hear that, listen back. Um, and then the next would be your bed. So make sure that you're, when you're lying in bed, you can see the door to your bedroom. And if you can't, you would use a mirror to be able to capture that view of that door. So however you need to put the mirror, uh, a mirror in position, again, it doesn't have to be a giant mirror, it can be um, a smaller, it could be convex mirror that captures more of the room um, and, and sort of pulls that door and opens that up for you so you can actually see it. So that would be the first thing that I would say I would look at because that is really connected to confidence and being able to feel like you're in command and in control. And I would also add that one of the Bagua areas that people um, are quite familiar with, however, they don't always know the nuances of it is the wealth area. So that's called Shun position. And, and it's related to wealth and abundance and prosperity, but it can also be related to your self worth and your self esteem. And so we're not, um, we're not working with you specifically. So I don't know your specific situation, Diksha, but, um, but my sense is that in general, a lot of people need more, uh, when they need, they ask for confidence and self-esteem, it has to do with not valuing themselves and value and worth, self-worth, prosperity, abundance. Those are all really um, woven together. They're deep seated issues that are woven together and relate to that area 
of the Bagua map. So you can start to unpack that and work on it. Um, that's something great to work on more in depth with a practitioner. But if you want to, if we're going to give you some kind of general basic thing to do is listen to the earlier part of this episode and find out what crystal relates to that area and use it. And I'm not going to tell you because you have to go back and listen. So you have to do a little bit for yourself. And that's part of boosting your self-confidence and self-esteem is to take things into your own, um, take a, take a, what is it? Take, con not control, but take responsibility for helping yourself. And, and don't just go on, don't, don't just ask people for advice, but really unpack what it means to you to, to value yourself more and, and where, where is this coming from? Like this lack of confidence and lack of self-esteem. Great. So, yeah. So how do you think it went, Laura? Our first, uh, good. Our yeah. first Ask you know, Angie and Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of technology happening here. I'm trying to like work through it, but yeah, it, uh, I think it was good. It was good. Good questions. And hopefully people enjoyed it and we can do it again. Yeah. Jennifer, we're gonna, if you're around, do you want, uh, so, oh, how do you think it, how do you think our first Ask Angie and Laura went? I think it went really well. Oh, thank yeah, you so I really much. got a lot of information from everybody else's questions too. So to help me with my path. So I think it's, I think it's a wonderful thing you're doing. Great. And thank you so much. And thank you so much for following us. I know I see you all the time on Instagram and, and also good luck on your, um, your new beginning. Thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. So thank you all for listening and to this uh, episode of the Holistic Spaces podcast. And if you guys like Ask Angie and Laura, we'll keep doing it. So we'll, tr we'll try it again. Um, but if you tune in every Monday, we'll have a new podcast episode. If you like our podcast and this episode, you can share this podcast with others. You can subscribe and even better, leave a review. If you'd like to explore the world of holistic spaces and feng shui on an even deeper level, you can visit our website, online store and blog for more information about feng shui and holistic living. You can um, support the podcast by checking out our courses and certification at mindfuldesignschool.com. And the podcast is at holisticspaces.com. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week.